Hello! In this tutorial, we will be using an online database called ProQuest to find articles. ProQuest includes magazine, newspaper, and journal articles that you can use for your projects and papers. To get to ProQuest, begin at the library website, www.edcc.edu slash library. Under Library Resources, click on Articles and Databases. The first box includes the library's recommended multidisciplinary databases, and ProQuest is the first one. Click on the title to open. If you're off campus, you'll be prompted to log in with your student number and last name. You'll be taken to the advanced search screen. It's important to use the advanced search screen because it allows you the most control over your search. Before you begin, brainstorm some possible keywords that describe your topic. Today I'm going to be researching concussions in youth sports, so I would take some time to think of other words to describe each of those things, concussion, brain injury, trauma, etc., for each word. That way when I start searching, I have a lot of ideas that will help me. So let's try an initial search on my topic. I'm going to type concussions in the first box and sports in the second box, just the broad ideas that I had, and then hit search. This is my list of results. As you can see, I have over 17,000, which is way too many to be useful. I'm not going to page through all of those. So now I need to go back and be more specific. So I'm going to click Modify Search, which will preserve what I had before, but allow me to edit. And instead of sports, I'm going to get more specific and try football instead, because that's what I'm really interested in. So I'm going to keep concussions, add football, and because we're using and, it's only going to return those articles that have both concussions and football in them. So when I hit search again, I've reduced my 17,000 results to 5,000, which is still way too many, but we know I'm on the right track. So at this point, since I still need to narrow, I can look to the database to help me. I can scroll through my list of results and maybe pick up some other keywords that might help make it more specific. I can also look at these suggested subjects, which are the way that the database is trying to help me make a better search. And when I look at these, I'm noticing that the word concussions is not appearing in here. They're using head injuries instead. That's telling me that the database classifies things as head injuries as opposed to concussions, so that will help me make a better search. It's also going to give me potentially some new ideas I hadn't thought of before, like the, the term sports injuries. That might help me later on when I'm searching. So now that I've learned a few things, I'm going to modify my search one last time. So instead of concussions, I'm going to use head injuries, like the database suggested to me. And since I was interested in youth, but I didn't add any keywords about that, I'm going to try head injuries and football and youth. So this is going to be both more specific and how the database wanted me to talk. So now I have 676 results. Still a lot, but way, way fewer than the 17,000 I began with. At this point, I want to show you a few more techniques for narrowing and getting the list of results that you want. Many times your assignment will specify that you need a certain source type, like a newspaper article or a scholarly journal article. You can find just those things by using these limiters over here on the right hand side. So if I click on newspapers, for example, I'm going to see only those 450 of my results that came from a newspaper. When you find an article that you want to read, you just need to click on the title. This will open up some more information about the article, as well as all of the publication information that you're going to need to do your citation. You'll also be able to read the full text of the article here, as it was originally printed. There's also some really useful tools on this page that I suggest you use. The email functionality is great because you can send this to yourself to read later when you're doing research. Oftentimes you'll find many things that you might want to review later. You can also print the article from here using your 25 printing pages if you choose, or from home. And the last one I want to show you is the citation generator. Now this can be very useful and give you lots of information, but I highly recommend that you use these with caution because they're known for being riddled with inconsistencies and errors. So take the information from here, but always make sure that you check your citations against the handbook or with a librarian. This has been a very basic introduction to searching in ProQuest. If you have any questions or you need some more help, please don't hesitate to contact a librarian. Thanks.